Okay, Mr. Watson here, and in this video, we're going to go back and take a look at the ancient Olympics. Now, I wasn't going to make a video on the ancient Olympics because there are some good videos out there that go into more detail than I will. But I thought I'd just make a quick video to go over the key points that we need to know, um, linking back to my As a Social Force video about how Pierre de Coubertin used the ancient Olympics as, as some of his inspiration for the modern Olympic Games. So there might be some um, some things that are similar, such as the events, etc., but also some things that are different. So we're just going to keep it short and go through the ancient Olympics. So when did it happen? Well, it started in 776 BC. Okay. And it was held every four years for over a thousand years. So there's the first comparison there, if it was to be used as a blueprint. The Olympiad, every four years, okay? And then finally, it was abolished in 393 AD, okay? So that's when the Olympics start, ancient Olympics started and finished. And a key point there, it was held every four years, as are the Olympics today. So Olympia, this was the site the Olympics were held, um, and it was often questioned why particularly Olympia. Now, something that was sacred to the Greeks and the people living there at the time was Mount Olympus, um, where the gods, it was the highest mountain, the gods would be positioned at the top looking over Okay, so it, it was known, Mount Olympus was known to be a sacred place. So naturally, that might have led to the decision to um, hold the Olympics at Olympia. And as we know, there are, if we don't know, there are lots of religious festivals honoring Zeus at the Olympics. Okay, so a sacred place um, from Mount Olympus. So Olympia was chosen um, in honor of Zeus. So we had something called the truce. Now this links to one of uh, Pierre de Coubertin's initial aims of the Olympics to bring peace and harmony. And we can compare this to the ancient Olympics as what used to happen is messengers would send out messages to people all over the country saying that safe travel was allowed. There was to be no war, no conflict during the travel to the Olympic Games. So this sport event, you know, held massive priority. It was very important to the country. Um, so a truce was called and safe travel was granted. Um, so de Coubertin picked up on this idea that it was working there and maybe in the modern Olympic Games, war and conflict would stop between countries. So let's have a look at the format. Now, the ancient Olympics was held over five days. This was extended because it originally was three days, a three-day event, and before that it was a one-day event. But for a long time, it was a five-day event. And as I've already mentioned, it was held every four years, also known as an Olympiad. Athletes used to arrive at the Games one month before the events. Okay, so this is a key point of the ancient Olympics. Athletes would arrive one month before. So this truce was held for quite a long time. And interestingly, when the athletes would arrive there, they would um, sign a declaration to say that they've been training for 10 months prior as well, so that they were in that supreme physical and mental state ready for the Olympics. Okay so that they could put on a spectacle for the crowd. They also had an opening ceremony, just like we do in the modern Olympics, okay, an opening ceremony. And at this ceremony, uh, obviously held before the Games began, it was the first part of the Olympics. And another thing that was very similar, they would swear an oath, but in the ancient Olympics, they were swearing an oath to the crowd and the gods that they would compete with honour and respect. Now, the oath was held a little bit better in the ancient Olympic Games uh, because there was much more severe punishments. Anyone showing gamesmanship or going against fair play might have received corporal punishment or if they were breaking the rules, they might be beaten. 
Okay, there was also systems such as fines where they put money, uh, pay a fine towards the statue of Zeus, um, a fine to the gods, if you like. Um, but we did have an opening ceremony at the ancient Olympic Games and there was an oath. Now, let's look at the first Olympics. In the first Olympics that was held, there was only one event. It was a running event known as the Stadion. Okay, it was a foot race. Now, this was 600 Greek feet or one stade. It's also known as the stade. And that is around 200 meters. So a sprint. Interestingly, why you think I've chose that picture, athletes completed, uh, competed sorry, naked at the games. Okay, This was due to make sure they were carrying no contraband, etc. on their bodies. And they were just there to take part in the games following the rules, the fair play ideals. We then had more running, uh, the Diaulos, might not have said that correctly, the 400 metres, two stades. Then more running, the Dolichos, this was the long distance again. It used to range between 7 and 24 stades. It could get up to around 3,200, 3,600 metres. Okay. And even more running, they would race in armour. So running was key, a key event um, at the beginning of the Olympics, okay? But it, as the Olympics do these days, okay, another comparison, more sports were introduced over time. And a key one in the ancient Olympics was the pentathlon. And what the pentathlon involved was the stadion, the long jump. Interestingly, in the long jump, when they did it, they had to hold weights, they had to hold weight when they would do the long jump. Uh, the discus, wrestling, and the javelin. Interesting point about the wrestling, and they used to have a time limit. One person would have to admit defeat. Okay? So they were your five events in the pentathlon. So they would be all competed, completed in the same day. These events would be completed in the same day. So some very tired athletes at the end of that. What other events did we have? We had boxing, a game where an opponent would uh, admit defeat. And also, interestingly, there were some progressions in the boxing where they start wrapping leather around their knuckles to compete. And this would often cut and scar the opponents. We'll just skip the middle one for now. We had the pan pancration. And this was a combination of boxing and wrestling. Um, but actually, the only two rules... Of that was no biting and no eye gouging. Apart from that, everything else would go. And there was this mentality here that you would never give up. And it could often last for hours again until someone admitted defeat. And then we had the equestrian, which involved chariot racing and other different events. And this event actually was one where the winners were the owners. The owners of the horses. And this was the only event which had any kind of inclusion of women as women were allowed to be the owners of the horse. Okay, now moving on to women. A bit like the Kubatan's first games in 1896, there wasn't really any involvement of women at the games, certainly not on a competitive front. So women could not compete at the games, and even only single women could actually watch the games. If you were married, a married woman, you were not allowed to spectate at the games. So the only real involvement in the actual event, like I've mentioned, was women could own the horses. Okay. So that was women's place at the games. And um, yeah, it wasn't great. So discrimination starting all the way back in the ancient Olympics. And then we'll finish with this wreath or death mentality and what it means. Now, in the Olympics, only one winner was recognised per event. There was no first, second and third. And what the winner would be given was a crown of wild olive leaves. And they'd also be given an olive branch that was cut from a sacred tree. Now, these trees were believed to be planted by the gods. So they were very important to the athletes winning. And so much so, because basically if you were winning at the ancient Olympic Games, you were hailed as a hero. So you did not want to lose. And this caused this, many would rather die, especially this mentality in boxing. 
and the pancreation, um, which wasn't good. There was cases where athletes had died. The referees would do their best to stop it, and an athlete could not actually go out to kill the opponent. Um, it, so, that, but many athletes would not like to admit defeat, and um, so many would pray to the gods before the Olympics, um, praying to win as they did not want to lose, as they'd rather die in honour of their country. And the, re the main reason was they'd be hailed as heroes when they returned to their villages and their towns. Okay, so this is just a quick video on the ancient Olympics, covering some of the key points um, between the ancient Olympics and the modern Olympics. So as you can see here, a key point would be they weren't given medals, they were given these wreaths, okay? Um... So that's one, is the short video. I've linked already in the lesson a more detailed video on the ancient Olympic Games. Um, if you're not from my school and watching this, you'll find some detailed videos out there. Um, so that's just a short video. Thank you.